This afternoon, we're visiting our friends here at Follow the Honey, located at 1132 Mass Ave, just outside of the heart of Harvard Square. Hi, Mary. Hi, Denise. Welcome to the Hive. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. So great to see you, and thank you so much for vi visiting today and bringing all of Facebook Live with you. There you go. So tell me, my friend, it smells so sweet in here. What's going on? Oh, well, that's just like the sort of the de facto benefit of being in the honey business because we get to be ambassadors for all the beautiful sensual gifts of the hive, such as the aromatic beeswax and the honey and the lotions and the soaps and the pollen. They all have very natural, not overwhelming um, essences. Mm -hmm. So it's like you get a lot of sun no matter what time of year it is from the smell. It's beautiful. Can you show us around your store? Certainly. Come on this way. We call this the horseshoe tour. Okay. Oh, oh we have to say hi to Tate Wanchen over here. Hi, Tate. Our... How are you? I'm well. Welcome. Thank you. And she is one of our hive managers and um, here full time. Um, back around here we have um, one of our premier exotic human rights honey taps. This is Tanzania Asali. Asali is Swahili for honey from 15,000 beekeepers now that we're supporting in Tanzania, Africa. And we just got our first ton of this Miyombo, which is a very chocolatey, um, smoky honey, pairs great with Chev. Um, so Mary, how does how does honey become chocolatey and smoky? Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a reflection of the terroir, just like wine. Yes. So when we look at um, like the arid climate of the Big Island, um, which has something called Kiavi Blossom, it makes a very white, opaque, creamy honey. Um, that's very different than the honey that we're going to show you next, which is a bayou honey from the Atchafalaya Basin in Louisiana, which is um, a red and white tupelo. And Avery Allen, hi Avery, he is a um, seriously badass craw fisherman and uh, keeps his bees um, by boat, um, single father, small batch producer, and this is a very drizzly honey. So people really like this honey for putting in their yogurt, putting over granola, because of the moisture content of the soil of the tupelo in the marsh, it retains its drizzly character. Nice. So then we have here, and this is allergy season, Yes. Um, we have honey from beekeeper George O'Neill um, from Berry Mass. Mm -hmm. um, this is your sort of quintessential wildflower. Um, George O'Neill also was the vice president of the Worcester County Beekeepers Association, which is the oldest bee club in America. Oh, nice. And then we have here our cheese section. Mm -hmm. And yes. we rotate out cheese, and this is also raw uh, pollen we have here. This cheese actually is from Chase Hill Farm. It's an organic farm in Warwick, Mass, and it abuts our, our bee farm. So we like to say that our honeybees pollinate the alfalfa and clover pastures of the grass-fed cows that make the milk that make the cheese. We're all connected, aren't we? All connected. Yeah. Takuna Matata. Hi, welcome. Hi. And then also just peeking out here, we're in the middle of uh, rehabbing our nectar deck, which yes. is available seasonally for, for events. Um, we, we're actually going to be yarn bombing this for an event with Feminist Fiber Arts Boston. So the whole outdoor soon is going to be full of flowers and uh, replaced beehive and live music out there. We welcome you to enjoy the nectar deck. Very nice. Um, and then, so as we're, um, hi, have you been in the shop before? I have been, Okay, yes. welcome back. So if we come here to uh, various more sort of high-end bottled honeys, such as um, the Manuka honey, uh, the organic white Kiavi blossom honey, uh, we have a little bit of this hazelnut. This is like the Nutella of, of um, seriously, it's uh, hazelnut and honey, and it's like it's like the Nutella like that's healthy. Mm. And then this is a um, honeydew, a very caramely, like maple syrup honeydew. This is, I think, a carrot. This is from a really cool beekeeper out in Los Angeles. So we're always rotating our curations. Yes. Um, we have a small skincare um, section over here as well. Um, the the, the Cela bees are made by Lynn Dalvignon in um, Rhode Island. Um, these are made by our very um, own Erin Shaw Art uh, for Fall the Honey. She makes um, beautiful tinctures um, with uh, propolis and different scents and fragrances. This is another herbalist in Vermont, Despy Savvy. Um, here's a little cupcake. Super. It looks good enough to eat. Super delish. And then the book and section. Go ahead. So the cupcake is actually. It's, a, a, it's actually made out of beeswax and and olive oil and you know just really natural. Actually, it's a, it's a beekeeping nurse in Miami. Who and uh, it's for decoration or? It's both. You can use it. You put it right in your bathroom and start washing your hands. So pretty <laughs> and functional. We're form and function. Needs. There you go. And then here we have. <laughs> Here we have our um, our honey tasting bar. 
So that is why we um, tell people immediately it takes 1125 bees foraging 2 million flowers to make one pound of honey. So it's 1 12th a teaspoon per bee per lifetime. So we say lick the spoon. So And taste the world. So you want to taste a little honey? I would love that. Thank okay, you. So let me see. So how, about, how about if we start with the... This is a really bright... So this is the, the Atchafly honey. It's a super popular honey. We have a, a chef here who... Um, makes a vegan, I guess we would call them vegan because some people don't don't have honey when they're vegans, but, but we know a lot of vegans. So this is the uh, Tupelo, which is a very sunny, hoppy, Thank you, Mary. notes of apple and pear. So it's sweet and delicious. <laughs> and if anybody wants to come by, Mary, and say hello to you, they can come here to your little tasting mm -hmm. um, a raw bar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you call it a raw bar. We just call it the raw bar. I like that and um, they can taste various honeys and then purchase them and mm -hmm. take them home and put it on their mm -hmm. toast and oh, well, and actually, well, actually on that note, because yes. we are curators and we're aggregators and we have something called Honey on Wheels and we deliver, well, like as I said before, we take the sting out of shopping yes. because we deliver love. Trust us, honey. So, <laughs> so we're having an event tonight, actually, um, supporting uh, community servings. Yes. So we'll be at the Langham Hotel with a lot of your colleagues and friends tonight, yes. raising money for, for a lifesaver. Um, but I wanted to show you, because we want people to know this is very important, um, that's just part of our, is we do beautiful curated gift ba baskets for people with mm -hmm. chocolate, lotion, honey, cheese if they'd like. Yes. Um, we have honey hope stones, which, which is actually a blown glass or filled with honey as a meditation on the preciousness of bees and humans and the planet. Here you do it things. all, don't you? <laughs> we are really all connected, and yeah. this is lovely, and I can tell you this, that we have um, purchased these gift ba baskets um, for friends and colleagues, and we always get such great feedback because the baskets not only are beautiful to look at, but they're beautiful to eat. Yay! Anything we can say before we, we you have customers here in the store yeah. you need to take care of? So. No, just thank you so much for visiting, um, and, and feel free also to um, continue to do Facebook Live. Anyone who wants to come in and play, um, we're, we're all creatives here. We love to have fun and engage, so um, come by. See you soon. And before we go, Mary, what are you wearing here? I'm wearing my bee suit. Yeah. I Look at that. <laughs> it's beekeeping season. It's beekeeping season. So, again, yeah, that's how I started Fall the Honey. So, I did, as you know, Denise, I used to work at WGBH Boston. So, I cut my teeth as a research and, and production support at Frontline, and then I was an associate producer at Nova. Um, did a lot of this and a little of that, and I was beekeeping for a few years, many years ago, 12 years ago, actually, after my first husband died of cancer, which is a sad story, but it's also part of the cycle of life and death, and sure. bees are definitely um, agents for that cycle. Yes. And then I was researching uh, women beekeepers, and I found a woman teaching girls and widows um, how to beekeep in South India for honey money. So I went to Kerala, and then I saw the, for the first time all of the enormous potential of economic development through honey money, just giving people that are underserved their due, that are sitting in all these beautiful blooms like neem and coriander and avocado and mango. And, you know, so that's a sort of our revolutionary sweet act of subversion with our human rights honey. Mary, you're just a gem, and we can't thank you enough for allowing us to come into the store today. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Mwah.